Hey everyone, welcome to Orb Creations, the show where I build an app, you get to see how I do it, and you get the source code in the description. Today, we're building a calendar app. The app will let you save and edit events, but it'll be totally client-side, so we won't need a database. To get started with this calendar app, we're going to clone the templates felt repository from the Orb Cloud's GitHub account. Link is in the description. We use this repo to get started quickly on all of our Svelte apps. For this app, we want to show a nice calendar on the home page that the user can interact with, so we'll start with a home route. We also want the user to be able to add events, so we'll have a page for that, and the user should be able to save and view those events later by clicking on a date on the calendar. Both of these routes will take URL parameters as props to tell them which date to reference. This is important because a user can reload without losing the date they're looking at, and they can save or type URLs to access a page directly without ever visiting the home page. As with before, let's start with the data model. The first thing we want to track in a store is the date that the user has selected. We want this to persist across views, so we'll keep it in a writable store and initialize it to today. We'll use a map or an object to store our data. The keys will be strings that correspond to the day we want to know about, and the values will be an array of event names. We'll break out the string into its own type. String is all we need for this app, but in case we want to add more details to our events in the future, like time of day or reminders, this abstraction will come in handy. Next, let's set up the logic for initializing events. We want to read the events stored in local storage. If they don't exist or aren't valid JSON, then we'll initialize an empty object instead. Finally, we'll want to persist any creation or deletion to local storage when we update the store. Okay, great. Let's build the calendar now. We'll get the easy stuff out of the way first before we build the homepage calendar layout. The hardest part will be getting the logic right for showing the correct grid and layout of calendar days since each month begins and ends on a different day. Let's import our stores and navigation utilities and we'll also define this utility function for serializing dates as strings because JavaScript date APIs are a little bit hard to deal with. Basically, this utility lets me pass a date and a delimiter, and it returns me a year, month, day, date string delimited by the second argument I pass. To start, calendars are basically just tables, so we'll use a table for our markup. We'll eventually add a header to the table for navigation and displaying the month and year, but we'll focus on the body for now. For the body, we want to add a row to the table for each week in the month and then add a data cell to the row for each day in that week. We're going to represent the days in a month as a nested array of date objects to allow for this kind of easy iteration. For each day, if that day exists as a key in our events store, meaning if it has events, then we want to apply a different style to that cell to show the user so they know that they have events coming up. Each cell is going to be a link that takes you to the day path, and the calendar number of each day will also be displayed. I'll add a bit of hairy logic here. Basically, all it's doing is conditionally applying classes depending on if the date is currently selected or if the date matches today's date. Again, so we can style these dates differently. Normally, I'd love to use Svelte's native conditional class syntax, but they only work on native HTML elements, not components. Now, in the header, we want two rows, one for displaying the current month and year and allowing the user to navigate back and forth, and one for event actions. For navigation, we want two buttons and a string to show the current month and year. The buttons will create a handler using the closure pattern to specify whether the month should increment or decrement. 
The actual handler itself just sets the day store we created earlier to a new date object that is incremented by the value passed into the parent function. We'll set the call span to let the date spill over across multiple columns. For actions, we want a link that takes the user to a screen for event creation and also a button that lets the user delete all of their saved events. The handler for deleting events just sets the event store to be an empty object. Okay, that's most of the home page done. Creating the calendar array is a bit hairy, so we'll go set up the other pages first and then come back to it later. Basically, we just have to define a weeks variable which holds a nested array of date objects. First, let's make the events page to let users create and save events. We'll import our stores and utilities, then define the props this component will receive. Recall that we're passing these in from the URL so the user can edit events for a day by simply visiting the URL. We want to set the day store to the date in the URL when the user loads the page. That way, when they go to the home page, the calendar can show the same month. It would be weird to finish editing events for a date in March only to be teleported back to January or something. We'll also initialize the fields we need to define an event, which are just the name and the date of the event. This page will just be an HTML form, so we'll give it a semantic main tag and a heading, then we'll build out the form. The user will need to enter a name and a date for the event, so we'll bind their input values to the object we initialized. Finally, we'll add a cancel button and a create button. When the user clicks create, we'll update our event store to add the event date. Or, if the date already has existing events, to append the new event's name to the event date. Then we can navigate the user home. That's it for that. Now let's make it pretty. Again, I'm not a designer, so if you guys want to make it even prettier, source code is in the description. We are going to do the same kind of initialization for the day page. Import utilities and stores, expose the same props, and set the day store. We want to get the events for this particular day, if there are any, and I'm going to abstract the events key into a reactive variable because we actually end up needing it in other places too. For the markup, we want a header with a link to go back, the date string, and a link to create a new event. Pretty straightforward. For the main section, we want to show all of the events, and for each event, we want to display the event name and a button to delete the event. We'll need to add a handler with another closure pattern so that we can delete that specific event from our store. The parent function will take a name as input and return a handler that filters out the matching event from the store. And that's that. Let's make it pretty. Now we're ready to write the logic for creating the weeks array to help render the calendar. Quick disclaimer, I didn't really do any research when I wrote this algorithm, so I have no idea if it's a good way to do it. It works, and that's fine for this app, but if you guys know a better way, let me know in the comments or go ahead and clone the repo yourself and try implementing it. I would love to see what you come up with. The idea for this weeks array is to get the weeks in a month, map over them, and for each week get the first day of the week, then increment the day seven times for that week to get all the days until the end of the week. JavaScript's date API will handle cross month and cross your boundaries for us if we do the arithmetic right. That looks roughly like this. As you'll see, we need a few helper functions. Normally, I'd put them in a separate file, but this is a good chance to show off Svelte's module context scripts. Code within these script tags are a little like importing from an external file and are only instantiated once, regardless of how many component instances are created. That means they can't be reactive, but they're great for caching data and defining component helpers. To get the number of weeks in a month, we need the year and the month in question as inputs, and we want to return a number. The logic is this. 
the month could start and end on days that don't fit squarely into a week. So if we chop them off and only look at the middle slice of the calendar, then we can just divide the number of remaining days by seven and get the number of weeks in the middle. Then we'll add two to the result to account for the weeks that we chopped off, and that's how many weeks there are in a month. So first, we need the first and last days in the month. Then we'll need to know the number of days to chop off the start and the end of the month. And finally, we'll add two to the middle slice divided by seven to get the number of weeks. Okay, great. Now to get the first day of the ith week in a month, we also need the year and the month. But we want to return a formatted version of the day so it's easier to manipulate. To get at these dates, we need to know the first literal day that the calendar displays for a month. In other words, the date in the top left corner. Once we find that, we can just increment by 7. I times to get the first day of the ith week. And after all that, our calendar finally works. Let's make it pretty. And there you have it, a calendar app. The app is currently hosted on Orb at calendar.orbapps.com. Link is in the description. All of the code that goes into this app is linked in the description. Be sure to check out these other videos on your screen right now. YouTube doesn't tell me ahead of time what they are, but I'm sure they're great. If you want to stay up to date on new apps we're building and coding tips and tricks, be sure to hammer that subscribe button and follow us everywhere else. Until next time, remember, you should never feel lonely because a calendar will always be your date.